Hey everybody, welcome to Burr Tech. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about how I made over a million dollars in Kickstarter and you can too. All right, welcome back. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about some very actionable tips that I've learned over the years with some successes and some failures, and I'm gonna be telling you what you need to do in order to make the big bucks on Kickstarter. Now, I've been on Kickstarter since 2015, and believe it or not, my first project actually had a lot of drama behind it. I'm gonna be talking about that later. But let's talk a little bit about some of the tips that you can do in order to make your Kickstarter a success. So the first thing that you need to understand is that you need to have a pretty good product and a pretty good idea. First, you can't really just kind of package something that's already been done and just throw it up on Kickstarter with a great marketing page. Although that might kind of work, that's not really what Kickstarter is supposed to do. Kickstarter is supposed to be a site where you have something that you built originally so you can raise funds. And believe it or not, Kickstarter is the best way to do this. There is no other site that allows you to raise funds before you actually make a product. So this is actually really good because let's look at our options if you want to fund a new idea. You can either ask family and friends for money, you can go raise some money, take out a loan, etc., or use your savings. But Kickstarter lets you basically put up a page and allow you to collect money for your idea. Now, of course, you have to deliver because the one thing you need to understand about Kickstarter is that you're attaching your name to it. And that can and will, in today's digital world, have major consequences if you don't do a lot. So really what you're doing is you're trying to launch a product and launch a business. And there's a lot of business acumen that you need and specifically small business acumen that you need in order to go onto Kickstarter. So the first tip I have for you is you want to put your Kickstarter level at the lowest possible amount of money. Now, if you let's say need a lot of money for your project, you should put up your own money for that first and your Kickstarter should be as low as possible. If you need a lot of money, then that is really difficult even though I know a lot of Kickstarters that do this. The reason for this is that the sooner you hit your goal, the better it will do in Kickstarter's algorithm. So you want to make the minimum viable product, whatever that is, to be the lowest amount of money possible. Now let's say you wanna make bigger and bigger projects. Well, that's what stretch goals are for. So let's say you wanna make any kind of product, you have a base option and you wanna add in more options, well, then you can just add in stretch goals. So this is a lot better than having a big product have a high funding goal. The lower the funding goal, the more successful your project will be. So the next tip I have for you is that you wanna have more than one item to sell. And the reason for this is that the more you can put in your rewards, the better it will be. For example, my projects have everything from the $49 level all the way to the $10,000 level. And this is really good because a lot of people will buy the individual rewards all the way up to that level. And if someone actually does do this, then it's obviously really good. So the next tip I have for you is good business advice and it's not just Kickstarter related. And this business advice is that if you can make a really good premium product that costs a lot of money, it's a lot better than selling a lot of cheaper items. Now, for my particular courses, I like to make sure that my courses are accessible. Education does have a lot of really expensive items around it, and I like to make sure my products are fairly accessible. But if you can charge more money and get to a slightly higher bracket, it's a lot better. It's better to sell fewer high cost goods than a lot of really low cost goods. I know a lot of people might think, well, if I can just make, you know, a million of, let's say, whatever product it is, and I charge $20, well, that's $20 million. It's actually really hard to do any kind of project. And if you're going to do that, that's probably not the best way to go. Because if you're building a physical product, you have to do all the due diligence and make sure everything is set up. More on that later. But the one thing that you need to understand is that if you can make fewer high cost good, it's a lot better than making a lot of lower goods. And this goes into my other tip is that if you can have some items that are premium for your Kickstarter, whatever that may be, you'll end up making a lot of money because believe it or not, you might not pay for something like this, but there's a lot of people out there with a lot of money and they might actually do this. So the best example I use all the time is that let's say you are really good at building tables and you charge a lot of money, let's say 10, $20,000 a table. Now you personally not might not buy a $20,000 table, but there's people out there that will. Now, of course, if you are gonna sell a $20,000 table, it has to be really, really good. And if you can do this, well, then that's great. You sell five of them, that's $100,000. 
that's really awesome. And this is why I always say that you wanna sell higher end goods. Now, of course, Kickstarter does have a limit, I think of $10,000. So you don't wanna necessarily sell something that's $10,000, but you'll notice that a lot of the top selling Kickstarter projects have higher cost goods. And this is something that you want to do as well. So the next tip I have for you is that you wanna spend a lot of time on marketing pages. And the best way to do that is to go to our Kickstarters and take some tips. What I really recommend that anybody does is that they have pictures of their product and they wanna make sure that there are a lot of pictures and a lot of information on it. The more information you put, the better. However, the first maybe paragraph or two explains what it does and why it's useful. Because people buy things for them, they don't buy things for you. So if you make the first paragraph all about something that is good for the consumer and why they should buy a product, then that's going to be good. And you want to have a lot of information because people will scroll down and they will read it. And the more you sell your product on that page, the more money you will get for your project. And if you're not good at marketing, take this opportunity to get good at marketing and graphic design. This is one thing that I learned when I started entrepreneurship is that I wasn't good at email marketing. I wasn't good at graphic design. And guess what? I learned those skills and now I'm a much better entrepreneur for it. And I learned some new skills at the same time. These skills skills are absolutely essential if you want to be an entrepreneur. And you need a lot of these skills, skills such as sales copywriting, graphic design, and video production as well. And this leads me into my next tip. The next tip is to have a really good video here. Now, for me personally, I'm just behind a green screen and I talk about the product, but in this video, you should explain exactly what the product is and exactly why it helps people. The clearer you are in the video, the more product you will sell. And the other thing that you need to do specifically is you need to show your product here. Now, of course, my projects are all digital products, which are absolutely amazing, but chances are you have an idea for a physical product. You want to get really high quality video and perhaps even hire someone that knows how to film this kind of stuff to make some of your video and to add some of your footage. You'll notice that the top selling Kickstarters have really high production values. Now, if you don't know how to do this, this might be an opportunity to learn how to do this because the best part about entrepreneurship is as you go through each project, you learn more skills and perhaps you can even sell those skills later down the road. I've done this many, many times times in my career and this is something that you want to do as well. So let's take a look at my first Kickstarter and how it failed, but there was actually quite a bit of drama around it. So I put so much work into my first Kickstarter, but I found out that there was another Kickstarter that pretty much did exactly what I did, but that creator scammed the community. And how did that creator scam the community? Well, basically what this person did was take the money and just walk away and never delivered a product. So as soon as I launched my product, I got a message in my inbox telling me about this story and that while the Kickstarter community was not into promoting any kind of these kind of products, specifically my products because of this bad taste that they recently had with this one particular individual. So I had many options at this point, but one of the things that I did is that I gave all those people who got scammed that Kickstarter. Now, of course, I didn't really receive any extra money from this, but I felt it was the right thing to do. The other thing about that scam Kickstarter is that that person literally walked away with the money. Now, how often does this happen on Kickstarter? Well, believe it or not, it doesn't happen very much. In fact, the success rate for Kickstarters are pretty good. That's why people keep coming back. Now, of course, you don't want to be one of those small people that absolutely kind of fails their projects because there's lots of Kickstarters that do that. You always want to deliver. If you can just simply deliver your Kickstarter or deliver a product to the specifications that you added, well, then guess what? That is a major success because it's really difficult to do that. But anyway, all the backers from that other campaign were very happy and I did turn that into repeat customers and this is something that I really did learn is that if you do something nice for a community they will repay you back in the future so last but certainly not least a lot of people ask me about marketing should I pay for ads what do I do and the best answer for this is to simply go to fund today fund today is the best way to market your Kickstarter in fact there's no better way to market your Kickstarter than to simply go to fund today you can email Jordan at fund today and he can help you get set up now I wouldn't be here here talking to you about my success without their help. Their help has been essential for me getting to where I needed to go. And not only are they professional, but they get a lot of results. In fact, 
a lot of the best results that I've ever had in Kickstarter was because I hired them. Now, of course, I've hired them with some Kickstarters and they've done better than other Kickstarters. So the thing that you need to understand is that if you really want to market your Kickstarter, I would just simply go to Funded Today. Not only are they really good, but they are extremely professional as well and they get results, which is the whole point. Now, of course, some Kickstarters have done better than others under Funded Today, but that's just the nature of business. Even big companies can release product after product after product, and some products will do better than others. So by going to Funded Today, this is probably the easiest marketing you'll ever do because they have such a very streamlined process for you to just make money. Now, if you've ever tried to do ads or anything else, you'll know that it's extremely hard to sell. But with Funded Today, this is probably the best way to just pay them money and to have you increase your sales. It's really that simple and I love using them. So if you wanna market your project, I recommend you just go to Funded Today. So last but certainly not least, the last tip I have for you is to stick with it. Now, one of the things that's really hard about business and life and goals and all of that is to just simply stick with it. Now, I've been doing Kickstarter since 2015 and since then I've made quite a bit of money. And what I do is I make Kickstarter after Kickstarter after Kickstarter. And what this does is that every project that I do, I have money to build a better project. And because of this, I've made a lot of money on Kickstarter. So let's say you launch a Kickstarter and it doesn't work. Well, then you can try again because the best way to learn is in between projects. If you made a Kickstarter that failed, well then guess what? You need to think about what you did right and what you did wrong and then make another Kickstarter. It might take two or three or maybe even four Kickstarters before you get it right. It's all a learning process here because entrepreneurship and selling things is a skill and it's a skill that gets better over time if you work on it. Just like if you were to work on any other skill, it's the exact same skill. And just because you fail the first time, it doesn't mean that your product or you are necessarily a poor entrepreneur. You just need more practice. And it took me years before I became a good entrepreneur. Now, I was actually an entrepreneur well before I started on Kickstarter. And because of that, I had a lot of skills already. But if I just started when I was, let's say 18, then I probably wouldn't have had a successful Kickstarter. In fact, when I was 18, I wasn't a very good entrepreneur at all. I took years of practice to become the entrepreneur I am today. And so just because your first Kickstarter doesn't do as well as you want, or because it fails doesn't mean your next Kickstarter won't be the smashing success it should be. All right, so that concludes the video. Now, of course, if you wanna become good at Kickstarter, you can check out our latest Kickstarter down below and you can look at all of our other Kickstarters. It's the best way to learn how to build a successful Kickstarter is to just simply look at our Kickstarters. A lot of things that we do right are in the sales copy, the videos, everything. So if you can reverse engineer what we've done, then guess what? You can also be that really good entrepreneur that makes a lot of money on Kickstarter. Also, I wanna know your thoughts, so please comment. Have you run a Kickstarter? Do you know someone who's run a Kickstarter? Have you run a Kickstarter and failed? I want to know your thoughts down below, so please comment, it really does help us out. Also, please be sure to like and subscribe if you like this video. Thanks so much and I'll see you in another video.